Okay, today we are going to be making a video on how to remove the water from your isopropyl alcohol of 70%. Now, this is fairly easy to do. Um, doesn't take a whole lot of, like, you know, intelligence to do this, so it's real simple. What we want to do is I want to use this as a fuel, and I don't want any water in it that might contaminate my fuel, and I want it to be as pure as possible. Now, unfortunately, right now in the situation that we're in, in this COVID deal or whatever, you have, this is the only thing that was available. And I don't want to burn this in my, my fuel lantern. So what I want to do is I want to make this as pure as possible and I'm going to try to remove the water from it. So what we're going to do is take this other one over here that says fuel mix on it. Now these two jugs were actually filled the same earlier. And the alcohol level came up to this plus sign right in the bottom in the middle of it. And you can see from the plus sign here down to right here where this fuel line is, that's how much water is displaced in there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this Morton's sea salt here. It says, very important, it says, this salt does not supply iodine. There's no iodine in the salt. It's just straight sea salt. This is what we're going to use to separate the water from the alcohol. And in order to do that, we're going to take this jar right here. We put in about this much salt in the bottom of it. This is the second time I'm using the same salt. And uh, what I did was I poured the alcohol in there on the salt, and then you shake this jar like this. Now, it's been in, I've been shaking it here for about two to five minutes, I guess. But it's about the third time that I've shook it up for like a minute or so. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to let it sit. You kind of want to do, give it a last minute splash like this because you want to shake off any salt that might be remaining in the top of this right here. In a second, we're going to use this coffee filter. And this glass. The siphon hose. And we are going to drain off the top layer of alcohol that is going to remain in this. Now, if you look in the inside of here, you can actually see the reaction happening. It's a good nice close-up of it actually going down. That is the difference of the layer right there. The top portion up here being the alcohol and the bottom portion being the water which is now actually salt water which is heavier than the alcohol. So you have alcohol on the top, water on the bottom. This is all the water that was remaining in there and if you look this jar is almost the same size as those bottles. And if you look to the side right here, you go this much and that much right there on the bottle. It's almost the same size. This is a little bit bigger around, but that's exactly how much water I took out of it. Which we're meaning I call this fuel mix only because I've changed it from 70%. I'm saying it's 90%. I don't know how many percent it actually is, but that's how you do it. So after you stir it up, you need to get the alcohol out of here and uh, we'll show you that here in another segment. So all you got to do is either take a turkey baster or a pipette, dip it in there, suck the alcohol out. I'm running mine through a coffee filter because I want to get as many remnants of salt or any impurities out of the alcohol so I can still use it for alcohol. And this is not necessarily taking the salt out of it, but it's going to catch any remaining particles that I don't want in there. So I definitely don't want any solid salt in my tank. So I'm going to strain it, but that's how you do it. One more time, I'll show you a close-up of the layer. If I shake this a little bit like this, you can actually see the layer move around, which is kind of cool. All right, so that's how you take the water out of your isopropyl alcohol using sea salt.